The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, we're going to go over fall planting, tomato maintenance. Our guest is author Amy Pennington, and we'll answer your garden questions. The hour is full, and it starts right now. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And welcome to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us today. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. Happy that you're taking time out of your day, whether you're listening to us on one of the 18 AM and FM frequencies, broadcasting our program here in 2022 through a radio app, through our parent website, which is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com or podcast replay or in-studio video replay. However, you're doing it. Thank you. If you want to be part of the program, you can do that. Really two simple avenues. One, you can send us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to talk to us, you can give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number, 1-800-927-SHOW. 1-800-927-7469. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation... And who doesn't? Right. And Proclamation Goods is for you. Supply is limited, so order is now proclamationgoods.com. Well, we are in the beginnings of calendar summer, and you may be thinking, well, we got to get the stuff growing in our garden now. Why would we be worrying about fall? Well, as gardeners, we worry about two years fall planting from now, but we want to utilize the best amount of real estate as we can for what we can grow as we see food prices continue to go higher and other suspicious activities in the food world we need to try to grow as much as we can holly absolutely and so that includes fall planting many people especially i know like in zones five and down four three two yeah yeah yeah, they might think gardening is just from Memorial Day through Labor Day. Some years it is. Some years it is. Um, And a lot of times I know even just like in southeastern Wisconsin, um, a lot of where the show that's where the show originates. So why we're picking that? That's that's the reason why Um, a lot of people will think like, you know, this I we see we see people ripping their garden out come Labor Day. Right. There's still 45 days plus there. This is a very common thing here in southeastern Wisconsin. So. With that being said, you have a whole season of fall that you can plant. And a lo- and, and it's kind of, you got to kind of take the same mindset. Things in which you planted early in the year, those cool weather crops, can be duplicated in the fall. The advantage, well, there's advantage and there's a, a strike against you. The advantage is the days are getting shorter and getting cooler. The disadvantage is at any given moment, at a certain time period, there can come a hard freeze and a snow and kind of really devastate anything that is growing that has the capabilities of withstanding cooler, chillier weather, but not hardcore winter freeze. The problem in the spring is we plant it as soon as we can get in the ground, and that might be three days before the heat wave hits and then springs over and that stuff just bakes and it doesn't do any good. So it's all based on kind of, what would you say, Holly, your last your first average frost date, you kind of calculate around that uh, time frame and work backwards. Exactly. So you want to go to your favorite search engine and put in let our first average frost date, put in your zip code, and it's going to tell you ours is, I think, October 15th. Something, right? yeah, 15th, 20th. Now, that doesn't mean we've picked 
tomatoes the week before Thanksgiving. Right. This okay. is this is like an estimate, guesstimate, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, guesstimate. Yeah. Um, Take roll a dice and pick a day. So it's not like set in stone, but right. this is a good guess, especially if you are trying to plant fall crops. This is going to help you um, plan for that. So you want to figure out your your uh, your f- first average frost date, and then back it off from there. So something like beets that take fifty to sixty five days to go from seed to harvest. If you w- were going by that by that time frame, then you are going to probably put those in the ground August first. Right. Uh, lettuce, mid- August. lettuce, spinach. You're looking forty five to sixty five days. Leaf lettuce. Uh, you're looking in that realm of uh, 45 to 65 days, so you kind of calculate. Now, in most parts of the country, come August, August 15th, in that rain, it's still quite warm. But what we're trying to do here is get the seeds to germinate, which we need warm soil, and then as those days progress, those days in most times become chillier. Or the, the downward slope is getting colder rather than warmer. Now, we always have those spikes in days. And something to keep in mind is that if you have something coming out of the garden right now, um, end of June, early July, you can then replace it, especially if it's something that takes possibly even 75 days. You can replace it in just about a month. Right. So we're looking at uh, broccoli. And cauliflower, you're looking at 60 to 75 days, give or take. If you can grow it, we've never been able to grow it, so we don't try. Uh, Collards, 55 to 60 uh, days. Cilantro, problem that a lot of people have with cilantro is it bolts very easily. Now, if you go on to our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, in the upper right corner, and in the search bar, and put growing cilantro year-round, we've got a rarely... Instruct a really neat instructional video of how you can grow it in your windowsill year year round in party cups. Works really well, phenomenal, and you can get as much as you want, grow as much as you want all year round. Um, garlic, you plant garlic early fall. We always plant it the second Saturday in October, and we're not harvesting it until late June, early July. So there's a lot of real estate. Right, and that's something that when you're harvesting your your garlic in July. You can, again, backfill it with one of these fall crops. Right. Now, disclaimer, we've done that. We've put a fall crop in behind the um, garlic that's come out. We've also put tomatoes that we've saved. We've also put potatoes that we've saved. And then we've got a late fall crop of potatoes, too. Now, potatoes, based on what you're growing, will take anywhere from 90 to 135 days. So you kind of got to juggle that a little bit. Um, at the very least, ten weeks to get baby potatoes. So that that's another option when it comes to, to those type They're of things. New potatoes, right? Yeah. So you, this is what you want to do is you want to, you know, I, I easily found a chart. I just put cool weather crops germination time, and it pulled up a chart for me. Um, and that's simply what you can do. You can also consider things like doing a, um, a cold frame, a cold frame, and that is a little bit of a different time frame that you want to establish the plants before you don't want to plant try to plant the seeds in october you want to get them a little bit more established and then you can have a year round or a winter a, a, harvest. a very long extended um prolonged extended time so i mean yeah that that low tunnel or that greenhouse or that high tunnel whatever you want to call it or whatever option you go with can greatly extend the harvest not only of your cool weather crops, but if you do it right, you can get some warm weather crops and kind of build it over top of them and really extend that out longer than what most people would even imagine. Absolutely. So you have that option as well. And even um, even in the spring, you can, yeah. you can do that too. So if you are, maybe you have a space situation where you, you only have so much space, maybe it's a time thing where you only want to grow like literally seasonally, right? that's another thing. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, a lot of our ancestors did this where they ate seasonally and they grew seasonally and then they had things like winter squash and they canned and they planted in ways so that they could extend their seasons as best as possible. And depending on how much of a conspiracy theorist you may be or how many of your conspiracy theories have actually come true over the last 18, 24, 36 months, we might be somewhat reverting back to that in some degree with a lot of stuff that's going on. Right. And there's, I and, mean, and we're not, you know, an InfoWars conspiracy theory group. We're just, you know, 
this is something that we all need to be aware of. Right. And that's the thing is, even if you, aside from um, food plants and things like that, having fires, even if you go to the grocery store, you notice that the prices on groceries are going up. Right. And so that a lot of it has to do with things like fuel costs and Mm -hmm. whatnot. So something to keep in mind is that you want to think about maybe what you're growing, how, like, and how you're going to store it and use it and utilize it. Or where your meat's coming from. And Walton's Incorporated can do that for you. Whether you're butchering or having it butchered or consuming it with your seasons and spices and tools, they got all that for you. Walton's Inc.com, Holly. Yeah. Our sponsor, Walton's Inc. We, you know, we know where you care about where your food comes from, all sorts of stuff. At Walton's, you can get the equipment, seasoning, supplies to make sausage, jerky, any other meat product your way to your high standards. If you want snack sticks that people actually like, there is a website, meatjuststicks.com, an informational site to help you find the best or make the best finished product. They have their own full line of meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers, um, and then they also have seasonings. All, all sorts of helpful things to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's everything but the meat. You can use code GROW50 to save 10% off your orders of $50 or more and get free shipping. There you go. Hang out with us. When we come back, we're going to talk about what you should be doing with your tomatoes. Tomato care right now in just a moment. You're listening on, the, on to The Gardening with Joey and Holly Radio Show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy Plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloominteasyplants.com. Fleet Farm is your gardening headquarters. Stop in today for everything you need for an amazing lawn and garden. Find great deals and trusted brands. Check out their huge selection of lawn care, seed, fertilizer, and even pest control. Plus, you can pick up hand tools, power tools, and equipment. And lawnmowers to keep your space looking great. Get everything you need in one spot, all at your garden headquarters, Fleet Farm. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com, use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use code 10 TG22 to receive 10% off your order at jungseed.com. That code again is 10TG22. Chip Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, Chip Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to chipdrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. It's a struggle to find fruit that isn't a disappointment or a waste of money, especially peaches at the grocery store. You bring them home, they turn mealy and gross. Well, Tree Riot Fruit Company has the answer. They deliver fruit straight from the farm, obsessed with quality, so you can actually experience the joy of a great tasting fruit. Love Georgia peaches? Tree Ripe delivers the best peaches you'll ever eat directly from the farm within days of being picked. Peach season starts June 15th and goes through August 4th. In July, they also deliver Michigan blueberries. You can find them at over 400 Peach Stops events throughout the Midwest or have fruit delivered directly to your home. All the event details and ordering information can be found at their website, tree-ripe.com. An extra bonus for you listeners, get 10% off your first purchase when you order online only, tree-ripe.com, by using coupon code HOLLY10, H-O-L-L-Y-1-0. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. 
Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at DripWorks.com. Thanks for listening to the Gardening with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Chip Drop, Bell Buster, Johnny Appleseed, Ivy Organic, Milkweed Balm, Waltons Incorporated, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Jung Seeds. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. With this hot weather that many of us have been experiencing, tree diaper, that's going to be the answer for you and your plants to keep you both sane. Tree diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases water around the base of any tree or plant as the soil dries. The tree diaper is filled with water from rain or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. No more overwatering or underwatering with the tree diaper. Every time it rains, tree diaper recharges. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Water your plants and trees, whether they're down by the house, down the road, or in the back 40. Also works under mulch. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, tree diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA, you can find out all the sizes they have available at treediaper.com. That's treediaper.com. Insane plants. That, that could be dangerous. So let's talk about tomato care, Holly. Most of us, uh, a lot of us, uh, based on who, where you're listening, you may have tomatoes already blossoming and producing and you're harvesting them. Others may have just simply recently put them in the ground. But we're going to tell about what you should be doing so we all can get on the same page so we can have beautiful, luscious, tasty tomatoes in a couple of weeks, maybe a month and a half. Absolutely. And I think one of the biggest things that people often don't think about is supporting your tomatoes and it does not mean taking them to group therapy oh i was gonna say emotional or physical physical support okay. your tomatoes. this is my emotional support <laughs> tomato. We're, we're not making fun of you if you need emotional support well that's not no, what we're doing not no, at no. All. no not at all um so yeah so tomatoes you want to stake them use a florida weave use a cage use what happens if you just let them be what what, what well, why can't we do that a lot of them will just sit on the ground and either animals might get them or they might just rot into your garden yep 50 percent of your crop is gone yeah uh, we tried this a couple of years ago and it's right we lost half the half the crop uh by them being on the ground uh, it was kind of us just forgetting, and then. But it taught it was, us a lesson, science. which we can share with all of you. It's accidental science. Yeah, uh, we made the mistake, so you don't have to. Exactly, um, and then mulch. Mulch is important. Well, what kind of mulch? Can any? Can we use any kind of mulch? No. Okay. So you wouldn't want to use like uh, rubber pellets or something. You wouldn't want to use synthetic. So yeah, synthetic mulch. Um, you don't want to use anything that might add any uh, pesticides to your soil and or weed seeds so with that being said if you want to use dried grass clippings that's fine but if your grass was sprayed by either you or somebody you hire with an herbicide that and then even if you let the grass clippings dry it's it can that will seep into the soil and then kill your plants right and uh we done a video a 60 second garden tap a couple of years ago on that and somebody had asked that question, one of the gardening groups, uh, this past week. And I shared that video, and she came back and commented underneath it. Well, that's a big no for me, because we talked about if you got chemicals you used on your lawn, you can't. It's going to kill your... So she was happy that uh, we informed her not to kill her plants because of that chemical that was in the grass clippings. Uh, yeah, mulch can be straw. Shredded, we've used shredded paper. Uh, leaves. A lot of, lot of options. When it comes, and people use, um, and we talked about this a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of shows ago, um, weed barrier or weed cloth uh, to suppress the weeds. Many options there. Many options when it comes to that. Right. And it's just important because it helps suppress the weeds. It helps keep the the water in. It helps 
maintain that moisture and also and and um, why do we want to contain uh, why do we re- want to retain that moisture what if we let those plants dry out what what happens then so a lot of times if you let plants dry out a they're not they're going to be more susceptible to diseases and that includes blossom and rot and b then they are weak so that makes them more susceptible to diseases but it also creates things like when you have that blowing out tomato or the cracking of the skin of the tomato you can prevent that by keeping the the water levels consistent. Well, I think we need to address the blossom in rot um, because 99 and a half times out of 100, it's because you're not watering it up. Blossom in rot can occur with too much water. But many of us, including us ourselves here at the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show, we often far underwater than overwater. So by underwatering, it's preventing the available calcium in your sh- soil, which is causing that developmental issue at the bottom of the fruit to not fully develop because it can't access the calcium, which you have plenty of in most cases in your soil. That water cannot transfer it up to the fruit. Right. And that is important to be able to allow those tomatoes have access to that or any of your plants. Keep really. it moist like a damp sponge. Right. So you also want to feed your plants. And we can do this in a couple of ways. There are liquid, organic liquid fertilizers in which you can feed your plants. That You can do that. There are granular fertilizers in which you can mix with water, like the IV Organics uh, 6 Macro. Uh, use coupon code RADIO10 at IVORGANICS.com. And uh, that one bag will do 20 gallons. There are other means of making your own you can make your own weed tea w-e-e-d-s by the weeds that are coming out of your garden we have done this there's a video on our parent website and you basically steep the weeds in a giant tote for a number of days now i will tell you it stinks really bad yeah but it has a lot of nutrient value to feed your plants with you would want to do this hours before and it's hard to plan this out, but I the, the best scenario would be make your weed tea, let it sit there for a week or two weeks, let it steep, and oh, it's going to rain tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. Water your garden with this stinky weed tea, and then let that water that it rains flush it into the soil. Right. And M- it, more thoroughly. Yeah, more thoroughly. Um, yeah, it's going, it's not going to smell pretty, but you can feed your plants with the weed tea. And it does provide uh, a nice feed. If you don't want to go through that process or maybe you don't have the space for it, you can get a liquid fertilizer. You can just do compost tea. Yeah, you can just do compost tea. Um, You know, whatever works for you. Now, you want to trim your tomatoes. You can trim. In order to soften or lessen the amount of diseases in which your tomato plant will potentially get, 90% of the problems your tomato plant is going to face is soil splashing up on them. So by mulching it, you're going to greatly reduce the amount of soil splashing up because there's a barrier there. Secondly, if you continue to trim the lower six to eight inches of the leaves from ground up, the stem, you're going to open up a a lower area for airflow and the reduction of splash up, what may be there, because there's nothing for it to splash on to. And this will greatly slow down the potential of early blight in your tomato patch. And you want to continue to trim this every three, two to three weeks. Just go through and clean it out. I would recommend throwing the leaves away. Don't compost them because we don't know what they are have on them. And there are some diseases. If harbored in warm conditions long enough, it will manifest itself and be able to be spread whenever you reapply that good compost to the garden. So just, it's better. I know there's some studies out there showing, oh, it's going to be... I would much rather just throw it away and be safe than rather than, oh, I got another problem here. Absolutely. So you want to make sure you do trim, you trim your, um, the bottom part of your tomatoes there. And then what we've all been waiting for after all this time is the harvest. Right. And this is important. And you're thinking, well, I'm not even close to that yet. But the, the important part is you want to harvest often. And what this does is it allows the plant to know that the, the, it, what essentially is its seed is getting harvested and that wants to put up more of its seed because it's like, oh, I'm doing good. I'm going to procreate. And that's why you want to harvest frequently. From flower 
to ripen fruit is typically 20 to 30 days based on the type of fruit, cherry versus beefsteak. And as you begin to see the tomato develop ripeness, the tomato ripens from the bottom around. So if you begin to see that tomato ripening, you can harvest it a day or two early. Bring it inside and it will ripen. It's not going to speed up the ripening process if you leave it on the vine. Now, if you're in an area where you don't have to worry about people stealing your tomatoes or animals or tomato hornworm issues, then you can leave it on the vine. But if you're harvesting every two or three days and you start seeing tomatoes turning, go ahead and harvest them. It's not going to increase the sweetness or the, the acidity level or whatever by leaving it on the vine any longer. Now, if you are waiting for to collect seeds on a particular variety, then you want to leave that fruit on the vine as long as possible, almost to the point where it's falling off of the vine uh, from rottenness. Uh, so that would be something you would want. But frequently harvest, that's what's going to allow these plants to continue. I think another thing is just to look look for problems. Um, so if you come, if you go outside and look at your tomatoes and you see that one looks droopy and weird and you're not sure why, look under the leaves, look at, um, look on the stem, think about when was the last time I watered. Ask questions. Ask questions, yeah. Just don't be like, oh, that one looks droopy, that's weird. It'll be and fine tomorrow. It'll be fine tomorrow and then maybe the one next to it will not be fine. So you want to consider that. And sometimes there's stuff like... Um, late blight that occur and by the time late blight usually occurs you're pretty much done gardening for the season anyway so that's important to think about you want to consider your tomatoes and their care throughout the entire season i mean we could do four shows on all the problems your tomato plants could have okay that's that's not an exaggeration um you could spend an hour on 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 each problem so there's a lot of things that are out there that we don't have the time available to share but we give you the starting point, and then you can always ask us questions at GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com or call us at 1-800-927-SHOW. And if you do send an, uh, uh, an email, try to attach some photographs. makes everybody's identification of that particular problem and the solution a whole lot simpler. Well, speaking of problems... Um, summer is in full summer, swing, Holly. That could, uh, and we're that not could looking cause. back. And uh, when summer comes, and this used to not be a problem where, where we're stationed out of, but now, it, that was 10 years ago, but now it is. The, the Japanese beetles are here and they're in your garden and they're wreaking havoc on anything that is green and growing. Absolutely. So if you're looking to successfully control beetles without damaging the environment, look no further than Beetle Gone from Phylum Bioproducts. It's derived from a naturally occurring soil bacteria. Beetle Gone is the only organic solution that successfully controls beetle invaders. Just mix the powder with water and spray on your plants. Once ingested, the targeted pest will stop feeding and die. And since it's the only organic BT product that you know is a great choice to use on your fruits and veggies, in addition to your ornamental flowers and trees. Not only does Beetle Gone work, but my friends, the best part about this is it it's safe to use around beneficial insects such as ladybugs, bees, and butterflies with no harmful issues with water toxicity. That's Beetle Gone from PhylumBioproducts.com. Find out more at BeetleGone.com and use coupon code GARDENTALK10 at checkout to save 10% on your order. That's BeetleGone.com. Well, when we come back, author Amy Pennington will be with us. You're listening to The Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now, 1-800-927-SHOW. Deer Defeat is an all-natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night, dries clear, and odorless. It will not clog your sprayer. Deer Defeat works for 30 days through rain, snow, and freeze. Safe, effective, and works on rabbits. Money-back guarantee. To purchase, go to DeerDefeat.com and use code RADIO to save 10% on your order. Deer Defeat. It can't be beat. 
Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. This week's Garden Tip is sponsored by The Amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. Spider mites are a very common pest on outdoor plants. They suck the juice from the plant, causing the plant to look dull and unhealthy. Mites also cause plants to lose vigor, so they may not be able to overcome severe infections, and then the plant will die. Dr. Zymes eliminates mites, thrifts, aphids, and fungal gnats. Dr. Zymes is armory listed, safe up to the time of harvest, and doesn't leave a residue. It's also safe for you and your plants. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. Are you tired of mixing and matching soil amendments to give your garden what it needs to flourish? Try Climate Guard, the nutritionally complete all-in-one organic fertilizer made with ethically derived NPK, beneficial bacteria, crop boosting fungi, humic acid, and silica. Climate Guard uses cutting edge microbiology and ethically derived plant nutrition to produce the same results as conventional fertilizers without the negative environmental impacts. Each Climate Guard pellet is infused with a high performance blend of living organisms that will continue building a rich ecosystem in your soil long after application. Available in seven and a half and 15 pound bags, Climate Guard is delivered directly to your door and available for order at shopjohnnyappleseed.com. That's shopjohnnyappleseed.com. Are you bugged by bugs? You need naturally green products, no more bugs. Environmentally friendly, made in the USA. No More Bugs is a cedar blend that repels and eliminates mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, roaches, and ants, and more. No Bugs is safe for you, your pets, and plants. Visit natgreenproducts.com. You can enter promo code GREENTHUMB10 for 10% off your purchase of any size of No More Bugs. Spring is around the corner, folks, and Algae Men reminds you that this year, when it's time for spring cleaning, don't forget about the outside of your house. Algae Men is southeastern Wisconsin's go-to for exterior cleaning, including roofs, siding, decks, and concrete. So if you spot ugly black stains or green splotchy stuff on your home, let Algae Men get rid of it for you. We can restore the area back to its original look, not only in a timely manner, but also at an affordable cost. For a free estimate, visit us today at algemen.com. Algae Men, we clean areas that you don't want to. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Garden with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Amy Pennington, moments away. But first, a message from our good friends at Simple Grow. Are you worried about your plant growth? Provide your plants with what they need to grow to their potential. Simple Grow offers 100% organic worm castings at simplegrow.com. Unlike other worm casting products, when you order from Simple Grow, you are getting 100% worm castings, not filler plus castings. Promote ideal soil structure and aeration with Simple Grow's all natural and odor free worm castings. There's only one ingredient, worm castings. No chemicals or additives will seep into your food and it doesn't smell like other fertilizers. For indoor and outdoor use, you can order by the bag, bundle, ton, or truckload. Check out what Simple Grow 100% worm castings can do for your plants and order today at simplegrow.com. Well, Holly, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods and bring in our guest for this week. Amy Pennington is a Seattle urban farmer who is passionate about all things green. She's also a writer, author, and food as medicine advocate. Her newest book is called Tiny Space Gardening. Welcome to the program, Amy. 
Thanks. Thanks for having me. Well, I want to start out with a question about your book, Tiny Space Gardening. There, we, we bring a lot of authors on this show, and they all have a aha moment that caused them to s- start with the book. What was the aha moment? What was the inspiration for writing this book? You know what? I actually have to give credit to um, an old friend. Her name's Whitney Ricketts. Um, She was working at a publishing house at the time. She was a dear friend of mine. And I had a little apartment um, with a big garden and a big kitchen, you know, even though the kitchen was tiny, but like I was producing a lot out of there and preserving my own food and just basically treating it like I was living on a farm, even though I lived smack dab in the middle of Seattle. And she's the one that said, will you just write a book on apartment gardening on like how to grow food in an apartment? And I thought, oh, that's so smart, actually. Yes, I will do that. And that's kind of how it happened. So it wasn't even my idea. Um, It's just someone framed it in such a way. You know, I thought there's a lot of gardening books on the marketplace. And so it's like, what could you possibly add to the mix? Plants are plants. Plants need certain nutrients. That doesn't change. Everything needs sun. That doesn't change. But this is just a slightly different perspective for people who genuinely have smaller spaces or spaces that they're maybe transitioning in and out of. You know, like if you're in a condo or an apartment, it might not be your forever home. And so it's from that perspective, just sort of like how do you maximize your time and space and energy knowing that you're not creating this like magical garden that will forever be in your life. Right. And I think the 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 tiny space garden, I think that and that that appeals to everybody, whether you have a 40 acre garden or a four square foot garden, that that kind of is the the everybody can utilize this book. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a nice it's a great Kickstarter if you're just getting into gardening. And if you're really wanting to garden, and you don't have a ton of space or you're limited in some way. Um, it's a great starter. Absolutely. So Joey and I, many years ago, grew vegetables on our apartment patio. Um, We really enjoyed it. What are some of your best uh, patio, uh, small space, maybe windowsill type of gardening uh, tips? So windowsill gardening is very different in my mind from gardening like in a tiny space, meaning like someplace outside. So tiny space to me is a balcony, a a fire escape, just something where you have a little bit of access, a shelf outside the window. You know, sometimes you open them and you can hang something there. Um, And that is basically where your space is just incredibly restricted. And so you're really going to look at plants where you can have bang for your buck. Um, whereas a windowsill is, that's a whole nother ball of wax. Like trying to grow something inside is a little bit different. And so we do talk about, um, that in the book as well, how to do that if you don't actually have access to outdoor space. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the distinction between the two. Now in the process of creating and writing this book, what, well, first of all, what is something unique in the book that our listeners would enjoy? And second part of the question is what is something that you learned while doing this book project and and publishing a book? Well, I think for um, anyone who reads the book or picks up the book and listeners, uh, even if you have a small space, you can actually grow fruit trees. And so I think a lot of times we tend to think small lettuces and herbs, which are great, but you can actually, they're they're, um, conditioning trees and fruit trees now where you can really have a dwarf variety. So you can grow... Um, like a conical apple tree and that it literally, or, I'm so not sorry, not conical, uh, columnar. It's a columnar apple tree and it grows up in a column um, pretty much straight. And then the branches are, you know, three to four inches off that main stem and there's an apple on each branch. So that's pretty awesome. I think that's really fun. It feels really special and magical when you can grow apples in a really small space like that. Um, I also personally really love growing and eating flowers um, and herbs, that to me is really what makes a big difference in your day-to-day cuisine. You know, like you can freshen up any dish if you have a little bit of fresh herb, and then when those herbs flower, the um, flavor is really potent. They're awesome. Um, So I think that's the most surprising part. What surprised me? That's a good question. What did surprise me? Well, we, I don't know. I don't, we, yeah. we can come back to that and while you ponder yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, we're talking with Amy Pennington, Seattle urban farmer 
and author writer. So I, what is the biggest misconception about small space gardening? Is it kind of what you spoke about that people think, oh, only herbs and lettuces uh, and, and that's all I can grow because I've only got so so tiny of a space? Yeah, I think that's it. I think people just don't really think about how much they can actually grow in a small space. Um, I think people are confused about what plants to put in a small space. You know, like there are plants that you won't get a lot out of versus plants that you will. So um, I think that that's the biggest misconception exactly. It's like that you that A, you're not going to be able to produce very much. Um, B, even if you have a small space, like you, you don't actually need outdoor space in order to grow food. You can grow microgreens on your countertop. You can sprout things at home and that's still something that's really green and fresh. Um, and then also of course that it's hard. You know, I think a lot of people think that gardening is difficult or very challenging, but it's really not like when you're in a small space, especially it's pretty easy to get going. It you have, you don't need very many resources and you can be off and on your way. And we want to let our listeners know, you just did, have not just wrote Tiny Space Garden. You've got a, a number of books under your name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for, yeah, like, a lot of cookbooks. And this was my first gardening book. or You know, this is my second gardening book. But um, most of the other books are about um, cooking and all about seasonal whole foods um, cooking. And, and I think we've gotten away, as a, 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 away from that as a society, that seasonal cooking and eating because we can go to the grocery store and get anything we want any time of the year we want yep. and we yep. just we, we don't even think anything of it yeah we're so spoiled and the interesting thing is joey that it when you are actually eating produce and food that are in season the flavor is totally different so a lot of times people are like oh i don't really like eggplant oh i don't really like peppers and it's like right because you're actually eating it off season when it's not super ripe not from a field not sun kissed and that thing that really matters the sun hitting fruit converts carbohydrates into sugars and that changes the flavor of vegetables there's no two ways about it and so a lot of times when um, fruits and vegetables are being grown commercially they're being grown in order to be uh, strong enough to ship you know so they're harvested at a time where they'll last on the shelves for a long time not at their absolute peak that's why tomatoes taste so great from the garden because you're pulling it off the vine right when it's exactly ready versus picking it two weeks early so that it will be shelf stable right and some so of it's the, a really big difference right and some of the stuff is picked under uh, not even ripe and then they gas it on the way to the store so yeah. it, it magically gets ripened on the shelf So what is an urban farmer? You refer to yourself as an urban farmer. And how does yep. that differ from maybe a backyard gardener? An urban farmer is someone who lives in an urban environment and has to contend with all of the factors that that introduces into the gardens. For instance, um, in an urban environment, you're often surrounded by taller buildings. You might have a tall building in front of you blocking sun at certain times a day, like the sun might be on your garden in the morning tuck behind a building at the midday and then come around the other side of the building in the afternoon. And um, so there, you're dealing with structures and things in your way and oftentimes much smaller footprints. So a lot of times in an urban environment, you we just don't have as much property um, on the lots. You know, it's like a smaller, denser population, whereas a backyard farmer, you I mean, you have a backyard. Not all urban farmers actually have a backyard. You have sometimes a little tiny, like I'm in Brooklyn right now, and we have a little... 10 by 10 swath of land in the backyard so that's that's the difference now with the tiny space gardening are in it with, with that concept in the book are you referring to using the natural light or are you also okay with bringing in artificial led lights to supplement what you can't get no, the book only focuses on natural light, actually. Um, bringing in light to grow something is another totally different ballgame. It's a totally different approach. You need totally different supplies. It's a different way of thinking about things. And so this book specifically is just about natural light. Or if you have no light at all and you just need a few countertop projects, we cover that as well. Fantastic. So we really appreciate having you on the show and enjoyed all of your great information. How can people find out more about you? Well, the best place to find out everything that I offer and I'm doing is my website. So it's my name uh, with a dash. So it's amy-pennington.com. 
And we greatly appreciate the time you've offered Holly and myself and all of our listeners and the education that you've shared with all of us. We thank you for that. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you both. Take care. Absolutely. And when we come back, it's your garden questions, our garden answers. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Japanese beetles show up in summer for a feeding frenzy in your garden, and they are the worst party guest, feeding on leaves, then laying eggs in your lawn for next year. Japanese beetles can decimate your plants and trees. Protect your plants with Japanese beetle traps from Rescue. New this year, Rescue has refilled lures to use the same trap again the next year. Made in the USA by the makers of the popular Rescue Fly and Yellow Jacket traps. Learn more at Rescue.com. That's R-E-S-C-U-E dot C-O-M. 90% of the world's flowering plants require pollination to reproduce. Without pollinators, we humans would not survive. Here at Finding Nectar, a Denver suburb-based nursery providing flowering plants that are bee, butterfly, moth, and bat friendly. We are striving to get more pollinators into the backyards of Colorado. Together, we can increase the pollinating population one plant at a time. Affordable plants. Check all the plants out at 1550 Highway 72 in Arveda and at FindingNectar.com. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit IVOrganics.com. Use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called Internal Wood Stable. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops, by spraying on internal wood stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, internal wood stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. Take the guesswork out of composting with Hot Bin Composting. Quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days. Find out more at HotBinComposting.com. A little bit of summer is what the whole year's all about. Barbecues, parties with friends. The fun is endless. Unless the sun or thunderstorms have damaged your outdoor furniture. Keep it looking brand new with custom protective covers from Covers and all.com. They have fabric choices for days that are 100% waterproof, coated to protect against sun, and can be custom designed for any size or shape, and placing or removing them. Easy peasy. Visit coversinall.com and use code GARDEN25 at checkout to save 25% on your purchase. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joey and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zyme, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue, Big Tool Rack, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us today and keeping us company on the radio. Time for your questions, our answers. If you've got a question, you can very simply send it over to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That is gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you are the talkity type, you can give us a call toll-free, coast-to-coast. That number for the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods is 1-800-927-SHOW. 1-800-927-7469. The talkity type. 
Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stockpot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stockpot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle... And who doesn't? And then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supply is limited, so order is not Proclamation Goods... All right, Holly, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. And Elaine called in listening to us on Joy, 1340 AM and 98.7 FM in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She's got a question, and we are going to help her. Hi, my name is Elaine. I live in Greenfield, Wisconsin. Could you please tell me about gnats, um, what you can do for them in your house plant? Thank you. All right, we got gnats in our house plants, Holly. A common issue for many growers of just house plants. How do we deal with these gnats that are a nuisance? You can take a simple solution of water and apple cider vinegar. You would want to do like half water, half apple cider vinegar, and then a couple drops of just soap. And you just shake that up and you spray it on the soil. And that will help uh, eliminate, you know, a lot of the, the gnats. And then also if you take some of that and put it in a shallow dish, the gnats will make it their little gnat hot tub and find their demise. Now, you don't want to necessarily, you don't want to spray this on the leaves themselves because that vinegar, though it is a low acidity, it can, based on the type of plant in which you're trying to rid the gnats of, can damage it. There's also in the in the um, hydroponic world and aquaponic world that they will put um, there's there's manufacturers who make shredded glass or glass chunks and will put on top of the soil in order to um, prevent gnats from forming. It's in the indoor growing world, not necessarily hydroponic aquaponic world, but that is a thing. Also, you could put a layer of sand. That will prevent the soil gnats from going in the soil and mating and laying eggs. So there's a couple of different ways to go about doing it. Sand, the only disadvantage to the sand would be when you water, you could displace the sand and then you have to put more sand. It could be a pretty big mess. Uh, I would start out with the, as you spoke about, the gnat hot tub and spraying around. So... That would be how we would start with that. All right, All right Holly. so we have another question. Yes. And this one is sponsored by Fleet Farm. Yep, f- sponsored by Fleet Farm and FleetFarm.com. That is correct, Holly. So, hello, I'm in Zone 4 in central Wisconsin. Is it too late for me to plant bush beans? Thank you, and I enjoy your show. Well, thank you for listening. All right, well, bush beans take 40 to 60 days, and that's when they will start producing their beans. And we learned a couple of years ago that if you continue to harvest, which we knew that, but we didn't know the second part, and continue to keep them moist and happy, they will produce all the way up to frost. We've had that in uh, two years now running. So no, it is not too late to plant bush beans. You can put them in the ground now, especially you're in zone 4B. So you've got, oh, 60, what what, what do you got? A couple of months uh, plus some in order to get those beans up producing and get several rounds of harvest off of them. So yes, go ahead and plant them in. Now, the other thing is, since we're talking about beans, pole beans will do the same as bush beans grow until frost. They will grow vertically. They've got little tendors and, and they'll grow on, grab whatever. But those take 70 to 80 days to reach maturity. So the, but, but they take up a lot less space. So if you're in an area right now where you have that time frame, but limited space, pole beans is where you want to go. But bush beans, if you don't have the time, but you do have the space, go ahead and throw those bush beans in uh, and even if you get one harvest off a patch of beans, you've increased, you know, it, it's worth the effort. All right, Holly. Uh, Here's another one. Yeah. Uh, on the Ivy Organics through on Plant Guard, I want to put on my fruit trees. What are, What is the ingredients? Well, first of all, the three in one Plant Guard is from Ivy Organics. Dot com. Uh, coupon code is Radio10 at checkout to get 10% off your order. And the three in one Plant Guard is a paint, essentially. Uh, to protect the bark of fruit trees or ornamental trees from sun scold and from rodents chewing on it. So what are the ingredients here? There's seven ingredients, Holly. 
Sure, it is. Uh, there's seven nat- natural oils, cinnamon, clove, garlic, castor, spearmint, rosemary, and peppermint. And then it has a whitewash, um, and it's an oil-free option, and the primary function of protecting your prized plants from damage sum- sun- summer, sunburn, winter sun scald. And you can use code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. At IBOrganics.com. All right, Holly, uh, here's a watermelon question. I'm looking to grow watermelon. I have failed many years, uh, many times over the years. Usually it just ends up as a small unripened melon. I am in, this person's in zone four too. Is it too late for this season? What is the best method or variety of getting an, a nice watermelon before the winter frost or the, the fall frost comes in my garden bed, traditional garden? Thank you. Yeah, that was zone 4B, actually. Right, right. But a large watermelon in zone 4 or 5, like where we are, um, it's near impossible. But several years ago, we were able to grow a watermelon. It was the cream of Saskatchewan watermelon, and we were we grew it in a straw belt. Saskatchewan watermelons are a white flesh round watermelon, um, and usually about, they're about 5 to 10 pounds. They have a a brittle green, pale green rind with green stripes, and the flesh was very sweet. Yeah, it, ours got to the size a little larger than a softball, but we were able to grow, I mean, a watermelon using the straw bell garden method, and um, is a phenomenal method that uh, many people should explore if you have problems growing items such as watermelons. Um, again, like like we said, Holly, you're, if you're, let's say, probably north of Peoria, Illinois, across both ways, you know, central Illinois and across and north, the chances of you growing a any size good watermelon is very limited unless you've got the correct conditions and the correct everything to make that happen. Okay. So we just had um, a question come in from Jason in, in Pennsylvania, and he planted hardneck garlic. This is his first time growing garlic. He planted it last fall. He wants to know when it's going to be ready to harvest. He pulled some out. He pulled one out, and he saw that the bulbs were were still pretty small. All right. Well, you need to, uh, prior to harvesting your garlic, you need to cut the scapes. Being a hardneck garlic, you're going to have an outward grow, an upward growth come out the center stalk that will curl. That's your scape. You want to cut it right as, as it comes out of the plant. And then three to five week, uh, three to five days, or no, yeah, three to five weeks following that, you will begin to see the lower two sets of leaves die off, ground up, and then you can harvest it. Um, some people will say, oh, just leave it until the whole plant dies. That is not a good um, method of harvesting because that bulb, if get too moist and left in the ground too long, it can start molding and rotting. So it's just like potatoes. If you leave them in the ground too long, they'll do the same thing. So that's what you want to cut the scape, wait three to five weeks, lower leaves begin to uh, dry up. Then you can harvest them and leaving the stock in and hanging them. There's uh, many different uh, videos and instructional videos online how to do that. But the other caveat to this whole large bulb garlic thing is if you planted large cloves last year. If you planted tiny cloves of garlic last year, expecting to have massive state fair winning garlic bulbs, it's not going to happen. The larger the clove in which you planted gives you the best opportunity to have a large bulb when you harvest it. So keep that in mind. Uh, We know people that have rescued lost varieties of garlic and it's taken four, five, six years of growing the small, letting it harvest, getting a bigger one, replanting, replanting, replanting until that occurred to get a size of substantial. Absolutely. Now we got a question about tomatoes, Holly. Tomato yeah, curl. I have uh, tomatoes that are dropping lower leaves. What can I do? I plan to move them to a larger pot. The other flats have some issues too, but these ones do not. All right. Well, we've had this problem before. And there's a couple of factors that uh, weigh into this. One being temperature. If it's too cool, um, the second can be the lower leaves are not getting enough light because the upper canopy has such a uh, thick uh, growth on it. Uh, overwatering can also cause the lower leaves to fall off. With as long as, long as the upper leaves and the majority of the plant, and we're talking if the plant doesn't have early blight or a 
disease. This is just the leaves are just kind of turning yellow and falling off. It could be early blight, could be soil splashing up, diseasing the leaves. The leaves get diseased and they fall off and the progressiveness of that will work itself all the way at the plant. If it's not that, um, we would just, you know, just leave it be, trim the lower six to eight inches like we talked about in segment uh, two and just prevent that from happening anyway. Just cut the lower leaves, leaving the stem of uh, six to eight inches up the stalk to allow the air to circulate. Uh, if you do have early blight issues, again, mulch. And then you can also, before mulching, apply a handful of yellow whole grain cornmeal around the base of the plant uh, on the soil and then water it in. And that will help reduce the early blight, which is in everybody's soil, by about 90%. And then mulch on top of that and water it in, and, and that will greatly reduce. The, the uh, whole grain cornmeal has a beneficial bacteria in it called trichoderma which fights the early blight, which is in everybody's soil. It's not like you're going to buy a truckload of soil, compost, have it backed in the, the yard, dump it, and then you're blight, fleet, blight free. That doesn't happen unless you get a soilless mix from a bag at, at, a, at a garden center. So uh, with that being said, Holly, we are out of time, and we thank you for yours. Did you miss any portion of the program today or would like to revisit it? We can certainly do that for you. You can send us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Click on the uh, and, and we'll send you a link to this program. You're going to also click on the season six tab at the top of our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable and uh, see this show and past shows and uh, ask questions there. Tune in next week to the program where we will be discussing summer plant diseases as well as things you don't need to worry about going on that's going on in your garden. Our guest will be author Sharon Lovejoy, and we'll answer your garden questions. So until next week for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden.